Now you've seen how math modeling is an exciting learning tool for students. It opens up new questions for the old question, what's all this math good for anyway? Today, Dan T will walk you through a modeling exercise he uses with his high school students. Take a look. This is the problem of driving for gas. The basic structure is there's a route that you normally take, and there's likely to be some gas stations close to that route which sell gas for some price. That's the most convenient. But there's oftentimes a gas station several miles off your normal route that's selling gas for significantly less. And so the natural question is, under what conditions would you want to drive the distance to the farther gas station to purchase gas? So one of the first questions I ask my students, because they're, they're, they're sort of comfortable with this scenario. They they're, may have cars, they've certainly been in cars and understand the, the time and, and effort it takes to, to, to go purchase gas. And you'll notice one of the, the, what I'm asking them to do, uh, we want you to work on this problem for the next five or six minutes, just again to brainstorm it. What I'm asking them to do is to make a PowerPoint presentation of four slides Again, sort of limiting what they have to present. But what I'm interested in is, imagine they're going to make an app for their smartphone that someone could use to answer this question. Okay. What are the assumptions you're making that go into your model? That's one slide. What is your mathematical model? What, what, are, what have you computed that, that's going to be used by the cell phone? And what is the... the presentation they have where they put in the information, what information do you ask from them, and what information do you give back to them. Okay. So we're going to be looking at just the basic part of the problem. Given this question of when should you drive off your path for gas, but what I'd like to do is just, just put on the table what are the important considerations that you've come up with. Miles per gallon of the car that you're driving, so that information needs needs to be known. So you mean like it's two cents difference, I'm not going to waste it, it's 50 yeah. cents, I might actually... Yeah. I mean, so, the difference in gas prices and the difference in time. Is that different from knowing the two prices? Would you rather know the two prices or just the price difference? Um, you're using up uh, some of the gas that, that you bought to get back from that station, right? So is that, that's not really usable gas. The fundamental question is how far away, yeah, how far is the station that's not proximate to your path? And the result of that is you got to use gas to get there. Uh, one of the things that I ask the students to do is to try to, again, just as before, specify a particular example of this problem. And one way of thinking about this is to ask them, suppose your teacher had given you a word problem based on this idea. <coughs> Could you create the kind of just standard word problem that, that he or she would give you? and solve that. Okay, just turn it into something that they're comfortable with, turn it into a specific example of the general problem. Okay. So you might want to think about, can you draw a diagram of the problem you're trying to solve? Okay. We always want to start, have them start with the simplest version of the problem that contains the essence of the problem. Try to strip away as much stuff as you can, but still contains the features that, you th that, that each of these still has some meaning and effect on the problem. So take a minute and draw a picture of the problem you're trying to solve. Again, to th think about your, your students, they'll draw lots of different things. Uh, there are a lot of sort of triangles. One of the things I try to get, again, get them to do is to draw something simple, to try to make it as simple as possible. Um, for example, something like this. I'm going from home to school, school to home, home to school, school to home. There is a gas station A that's on the route, so it doesn't cost me anything at all to get there. There's a gas station B that's off the route. I've got to get to the gas station and get back to my route and then continue. Once I solve the simplest version of the model, then I want to make it more realistic. 
but I don't want to start with the more realistic problem to begin with, in part because it may in fact be too realistic and I, I struggle with solving it. If I can't solve the simplest version, I'm not going to solve the more complicated version. But more fundamentally, the insight that I get by solving the simplest version is oftentimes very, very easy, makes this, the harder problem just a modification of that earlier solution. And that's the whole idea of the modeling cycle is to get a solution. That solution becomes new information. And you start from a different place than you did originally. And you keep adding in reality as you go through rather than trying to create a fully realistic model initially. That's, that's one of the things students struggle with and you have to really work, work with them on. So I, I draw a picture of it and then I just turn it into the problem my teacher would give me. Simple numbers, five miles, three dollars, 285 a gallon. Can I solve this problem? Can I create a car where the answer is, yes, I would go to B? Could I create a car where the answer would be, no, I wouldn't go to B? And again, just sort of playing, playing with that, that kind of question. Um, once I figured this guy out, make it a bit more complicated. Suppose there are now two stations. Well, if I can do one, I should probably be able to do it. Can I create a problem in which I would go to C, but I would not go to B? How many different solutions can I create? So I'm just creating four or five different examples and just, because this is just arithmetic. So can I solve those arithmetic problems? And by doing so, I can see what changes I had to make to create solutions that says, no, I wouldn't go either to B or C. I'd just go to A. But the transition from just word problems that they're very comfortable with to modeling problems, one of, the, one of the key ingredients is for them to create those word problems, for them to create their own version of the problem they think their teacher would have given them to solve. And from there, you can now generalize the problem to some arbitrary costs, some arbitrary distances, some cars with different characteristics. And those, those sorts of questions that you want to help students to sort of think through about how you're going to do this. Are you going to try to have your applet value their time from information they've given it? Or are you going to let them make, give them output that would let them make that decision for themselves? I will probably use more of the open-ended with them drawing the diagram first before giving them the words. That was interesting. I like that. And it'll satisfy the MP standards in the Common Core. And it just, just works out great. Authentic problem solving is anything but algorithmic. It encourages your students to make decisions and use their math tools. However, it's also remarkably accessible. The same framework, which we call the math modeling process, can be used to help you navigate through any number of real-world problems.